terms of reference between the CEO and the commissioner. Can you describe, sir, how that is going to improve the overall voting process and, and the conduct of Elections Canada as we, as we uh, conduct elections in Canada going forward? Well, the commissioner is in charge of investigations. Uh, election, the CEO is principal responsibility is to run elections. Um, and I think that uh, it would help uh, the CEO to, have to, to focus more on that core mandate. Uh, anybody who's read the uh, Neufeld report uh, will realize that there were very serious irregularities in appallingly high numbers uh, in the last election. 165,000 serious errors uh, committed uh, by Elections Canada uh, under the CEO's leadership. And uh, I think that we can only improve on that uh, by focusing, uh, by, if he focuses uh, on that core mandate. Yes, thank you. Your time is complete. Mr. Scott, for four minutes. Okay, if I could ask Mr. Lynch or Ms. Mondu to have a look at page 219 of the new bill, uh, have a look at 509.4 and point six, And I'd, I'd like to come back to that before the end of my question. So it's a very technical question. For the minister... Uh, the new Section 20 of the Act um, basically says the Chief Electoral Officer may engage on a temporary basis the service of persons having technical or specialized knowledge, but it goes on to say that to appropriate the funds for that, he has to get uh, Treasury Board approval. That's Section 20 of the Act. So, Minister, could you confirm that this provision now means that Elections Canada would no longer have the independence to commission such reports as the Newfeld report that you like to cite, or as the Institute for Research and Public Policy study on robocalls that was instrumental in putting together the Chief Electoral Officer's report on deceptive calling. Uh, the need for the approval of the Treasury Board is something that I'm very concerned about in terms of inserting the government between the Chief Electoral Officer and his ability to carry out studies. Uh, I, I don't think you're referring to Section 20. You're referring to Section 5094. No, I, I asked, please, would you, Section 20 of the Act, of the new Act, is the question. I well, asked, the new Act doesn't have sections. It's because it's, it's not an Act yet. It's, it has would clauses. Would you answer the question, please? You know what I'm referring to. Treasury Board approval for hiring commissioner, uh, uh, specialists, such as Neufeld. Yes, the, 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 you're referring to Clause 20. Uh, clause, I think. Uh, clause 20 in the new Act. Yes. Section 20 in the new Act. Right. So... Section 20, you're relating to the, the, there's something called a deputy head of any organization. Right now, the deputy head for the purposes of staffing and contracting is the CEO of Elections Canada. We're making the commissioner independent of the CEO of Elections Canada. Let me finish. And that will make this, the commissioner his own deputy head for the purposes of the Public Service Employment Act. However, for the purposes of the, of the Financial Administration Act, the deputy head will be the director of public prosecutions. And as a result, he I'm will at, uh, play the functional role that is currently sir, played I need to, I need, by I need the to, CEO of Elections Mr. Canada Mr. with regards to, to contracting. My question was about the chief electoral officer's ability to hire specialists with, uh, only with Treasury Board approval. I asked Mr. Lynch to be prepared for a second question, which you're dealing with, and you're not actually answering it. The first question is Treasury Board approval to hire the Neufelds, the Institute for Research and Public Policy, all of those. Is that correct that you now need the President of the Treasury Board, the Treasury Board's approval for the Chief Electoral Officer, not the Commissioner? I'll let the official come to that point. The uh, <clears throat> proposed amendment to Section 20 and Clause 10 uh, is with respect to uh, technical or specialized uh, services, uh, such as uh, support for computer systems, for example, very administrative uh, support for the, for the organization. It's a uh, standard clause that's used in a number of different statutes, including for other agents of Parliament. And the role of the Treasury Board is to uh, approve the person's remuneration expenses, not the contract itself. Exactly. And so the point is that the Treasury Board approval is needed for those kinds of uh, temporary contracts. Uh, I would just point out that the Treasury Board's approval is also needed for the uh, payment of, uh, of election officers. So okay. It's not unusual. Um, then the last question is for the Minister. I'm going to s skip the, uh, the technical question because we got into it earlier. Are you aware, are you aware Minister, that the Newfield report recommended the expanding of the use of voter identification cards? 
I am aware of the recommendation. Uh, I'm also aware of the data and I uh, appreciate the excellent work that Mr. Neufeld did in providing that data. Um, uh, I, you know, the, the reality is that Elections Canada has acknowledged that one in six uh, people on the National Register of Electors uh, have false information associated with their names uh, and that uh, that false information then flows onto the voter identification, voter information card. Uh, we cannot have voter information cards that have uh, errors one in six uh, times uh, used to identify voters at the polls. It is uh, too susceptible to abuse and that's why we're removing that form of ID. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Mr. Reid, four minutes. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, several years ago, to be specific, on April 27, 2006, uh, Jean-Pierre Kingsley, who was then the Chief Electoral Officer, appeared before this uh, committee. I was a member then, as I am now, and I drew to his attention the fact that in the 2006 election, which was then a recent memory, I had received three voter cards at my address, one addressed to Scott Jeffrey Reed, that's my full name, one addressed to Scott Reed, and one to Jeffrey Reed. So, strictly speaking, there were no errors made, but I had three cards. I could have voted with one if it was accepted as ID at uh, the returning office with one at the advance poll, with one at my local poll. They all are staffed by different people. An, an, an inadvisable uh, approach for someone who's actually a member of parliament, but the point, I think, is made that uh, these things are not reliable identification. In a later election, a provincial election in all fairness, uh, my wife and I, who live of course at the same house, uh, received voter cards, hers using the rural route address, which is in one riding, mine using the street address in another riding, so the result was that we were actually told by the cards to vote in different ridings. So I concur there are problems and I've experienced these myself. I wanted to raise uh, two uh, two issues. One is really for the CEO, not for yourself, Minister. Um, the question about how many people uh, have uh, driver's licenses. is the really relevant question is there's 39 pieces of identification. What percentage of Canadians have none of those? And if so, that will not be a random cross-section of Canadians. It will be a specialized group for some reason are in, in an unusual situation. I'd like to hear his response as to has he gone through and looked and tried to identify people who, like the senior citizens living at mobile polls in Etobicoke Centre, were unable to vote because the vouching system did not allow them to vote uh, and it did nothing for them and who also had no ID. But here's the thing I wanted to say to you, Mr. Uh, Minister. Regarding your, your meeting with the Chief Electoral Officer, um, I would have been very upset. He submitted a, a very lengthy report and recommendations to this committee. We reviewed it at great length. I would have been very upset if at that meeting he had come to you with any recommendations separate and distinct from those, and I would have been even more upset with you if you had produced a bill based on his private recommendations to you that do not correspond with his recommendations made to the entire committee, which were passed on to the government for you to follow through. So I just want to go on the record as saying that you got plenty of input from him via this committee and did the right thing. I may disagree with individual things in the bill, but you did the right thing by coming back and dealing with it in the normal manner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, on your point, uh, Mr. Reed, related to um, voter identification, voter information cards, excuse me, uh, I think one measure in the Fair Elections Act that will help deal with election day confusion, and which was identified by Mr. Neufeld, was increasing the number of people who have pre-registered by having their names added uh, to the, the list. Um, Section 18D, sorry, 18B of the Canada Elections Act will read upon its amendment that the Chief Electoral Officer will provide information on how an elector can may be may have their names added to a list of electors and may have corrections made to information respecting the elector on the list. And that is a very important tool for reducing uh, complexity and confusion and wait times on election day. If people are on the list when they get there, they don't need to register when they arrive to cast their ballot. This provision will inform Canadians of the, the simple ways that they can have their name added and their information updated if it is not already there. Great. Um, we have a reduced amount of time left, so we're going to go a uh, two-minute round, starting with Mr. Lukiski for two, and then Madam Lutzen, just that'll finish. So sorry, it'll be you, Mr. Scott. Great. Thank you very much. Minister, I'll just go back to a comment I, I made in my earlier intervention. I want to see whether you concur or not. It's certainly something I think is, is true. 
Uh, although the opposition seems to think that this new bill will disenfranchise a great many people, over hundreds of thousands of people, I would think it would be almost impossible to find anyone, or at least very few people in Canada, who voted in the last election that would not be able to vote in this election under the new provisions in the Act. Would you concur, or at least would you be able to give comment on that? Well, look, um, I'll give you an example of the knowledge gap that exists. Uh, Elections Canada did some surveying of youth who decided not to cast a ballot, and a quarter of them said that not knowing where, when, or how to vote played a role in dissuading them from doing so. The Fair Elections Act will ensure that those young people have that information, among which includes required ID. And I think that will mitigate the problem of knowledge gap that has d d dissuaded young people and the population at large from casting a ballot. Um, so we have, we have 39 forms of identification that will continue to be allowed. And if Canadians know what those are, they can very easily prepare themselves for Election Day. Thank you. 30 seconds. Fine. Madam, Mr. Scott, two minutes. Thanks, Tom. Uh, just to go back to clear up the confusion with uh, Mr. Lynch, could you give me an answer on Section 509.6, the new, what would be in the new Act is 509.6. And the simple question is, uh, with the certificate of the DPP, Director of Public Prosecutions, uh, can the Commissioner hire investigators and other specialists on a temporary basis directly from the Consolidated Revenue Fund? Because it's not mentioned that the provision section 509.4 is not specifically mentioned right. in 509.6. And it's just a clarification. I'd love the answer to be yes, and I'm wondering if it is. Yes, if you refer to uh, 509.6b, mm -hmm. it refers to any expenses incurred by, on behalf of, or in relation to the Commissioner under this part. It's included in that, in your interpretation. Okay, that's, that's all I need. That's very good. Uh, for the Minister, uh, section 376 of the new Act is the is the clause dealing with uh, exempting fundraising calls uh, to pre-existing uh, donors who've given $20 or more. I'm going to, I'd love to ask you what the $20 or more is about, but what I really am concerned about, apart from the advantage it gives to parties that have the extra money to be running full ramp, these kind of voting operations have established voter donor bases, that's obvious to everybody. My question is, um, the wording of this provision, in your view, does it allow a party to make calls where they simply add in an ask, where they say, uh, oh, by the way, could you please donate? And at the same time, the purpose of the call is uh, getting out the vote or asking to volunteer or persuading somebody to vote. No, that is not a concern. Uh, and it is uh, based, I've heard some other public commentary that is also false on this point. And uh, I'll have to break it down, though, Mr. Chair, with your permission. First of all, the number of donors a party has is a tiny fraction of the number of supporters it has. So if a party were just to, to call its identify its donors to ask them to vote, they would be doing a get-out-the-vote enterprise of a very, very tiny fraction of their overall support base. Furthermore, they'd be calling the people that they least need to call. Donors are the least likely to miss voting day. They're obviously civically engaged enough to give of their own money. They're going to give of their own time. Question to vote. But is, I could can, finish, if I can finish on this point. If I could just finish on this point. Uh, to, to think otherwise is to conflate two completely distinct and different functions of a campaign, voter, uh, voter turnout versus fundraising. Um, and I would also add that the NDP had a very similar rule in its leadership race. And I can quote from it right here. We heard that in the it House says, uh, over no, time. I, this is my, uh, listen, he asked the question. I, I want to give the answer. It we're, says here we're, we're that expenses time. for fundraising politics, are Come not on. subject. Come on. Oh. Come on. Well, if I, if I could finish, I know the NDP doesn't want to hear the, the, its own rules, but those rules state that any fundraising 